What's going on everybody, Physio Treater here, and I wanted to do a little bit of a rundown on the Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge platform and what it looks like to buy and sell options or trade options. So let's take a look, let's jump into the platform. So since I have you on my MacBook Pro, just because um, I really wanna kinda of keep this screen small, kinda of take out some of the fluff, uh, this is going to look up very similar to when I'm trading, uh, whereas, you know, I have this trade tab versus option tab. Um, so if you're familiar with the other video there, then, of course, you should know, you know, recognize this. I just click the tab and it's optimized just to look at the um, at the option chain. So uh, right now, again, the market is closed. So you're going to see um, these buttons are going to be grayed out. Uh, BTO, STO, BTC, STC, uh, buy to open, sell to open, buy to close, sell to close. Um, so just depending on what you're going to do. So um, first and foremost, uh, what you can do and, and when you default, when you're looking at, um, at options, there's a couple things you can do. Um, you can look at it where it is in a horizontal versus the standard vertical um, option chain. Um, whereas if you are looking at both the, um, the calls and then the, um, the puts. And so you can, you can always look at this. I like that it does have the numbers are on both sides. Some of them kind of, you know, inverse into each other, but I like how it does this way. Um, very rarely do I look at it, um, in this way, just because it takes a lot of real estate, uh, horizontally. And so, you know, just the way I have it set up now, of course, you could just switch these and, you know, basically put, you know, I always could just put these two there um, and then put the option chain way down here, except for the fact that this all-in-one trade ticket, my biggest complaint is that I can't separate the chain from the rest of the order entry window. And, you know, so it's just a matter of trying to find out what type of real estate works the best for you based on your setup. Now, of course, when I'm trading on my bigger screen um, or when I have this moved to one of my external monitors, then I typically actually just use the option iMac screen, which is just a much bigger screen. And so I don't care. I do normally have things set up where I have a lot more room. But right here, since I'm working on, uh, you know, limited real estate, uh, you know, trading from a laptop, um, you know, I like it and actually grown quite accustomed to it because sometimes, you know, less is more. And so... The way it works is you can see, you know, this is the, the following week. We've got Tesla up here. And so Tesla, you can see the price. Uh, and this is just the underlying, uh, you know, stock. Uh, the bid ask, all of this is going to be related to the underlying stock. 15 million shares traded, 15.18 uh, million shares traded for the day. Uh, the spread is 50 cents between the two. I love that it tells you the spread and the, the bid ask size. So 200 versus 100. I really like how it does all this. Um, but when we're looking at it, so when you're placing your order versus looking at the chain. So um, for instance, in the mornings, if I'm wondering, do I want to go call? Do I want to go put? If I'm trying to trade the options, I'll have it set to both. Um, but let's say for a fact you're long biased and you want to get a call. Well, then you're just going to click the call and it's only going to show you calls or maybe vice versa. Maybe you know you want to look at just puts um, and then you are just going to see the puts. Now, of course, these are all green right now because Tesla lowered in price throughout the day, as you can denote via uh, the 2.46% loss on the day trading, $18.59 per share difference. So um, we'll go back to both. And so, I again, I have mine set vertically, so it's just going to have the calls up top and then the puts. And so uh, you can choose, you know, do you want calls, puts? Um, this is if you're going to do certain spreads. You're gonna do you know, spreads, combos, um, right, under right, sell, straddle, strangle, collars, um, you know, zero cost collars, synthetics, rollouts. Uh, we could talk about that in the future, in a future video. Right now I wanna keep it kind of uh, simplistic. Uh, another thing you can do is if you want, you can just click this uh, plus button and it'll open up a pre-approved, um, or not pre-approved, but pre-designed based on whatever strategy you're attempting to implement. So you can also see here, um, option approval level none. This specific account that I'm doing this demo on, uh, it's not a demo account, it is live, but this specific account, I do not have options. So that's why it says none. If you do have um, options approved, it'll tell you what level you can do. Can you do this line? Can you do spreads? Can you do combos? And then more on, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, and again, separate video for that one as well. 
Now here you're just gonna click your quantity, you know, just like you would anything else. Um, as you can see over here, um, the price uh, of what it's gonna be, the estimated buy, is going to basically double, triple, quadruple, so on and so forth. So you kind of adjust that, that's the cost of the actual contract. Um, and set for the standard, you're gonna buy the contract and sell the contract or buy the contract open and then sell to close. Just a standard, you're gonna buy it and then you're gonna sell it. Now, what you can do here too is if you click this downward arrow, it'll show you both, as in what's your max gain you're set to make on this by buying the put and what is your max loss and then vice versa. If you sell the contract, the max money you're gonna collect, you know, that much money in premium, if you're selling the contract, you're gonna collect that 1375 in premium, uh, you know, right away, but you can lose basically up to the underlying you know cost of all of it 71,000 um you know depending on if the option kind of goes against you so um as you know selling contracts are you know they hold a much larger area of risk compared to um you know buying the contract so uh, this of course the reason it doesn't say unlimited is because it's not a call contract it can't go you know to infinity uh the worst would be you buy the contract and um, that's how much money is spent. And then of course, Tesla goes to zero. Now, theoretically, is this going to zero? It's unlikely. Again, another video on what the options mean. This is simply just how to use the platform. So once you determine that you wanna call a contract or you wanna put contract, doesn't matter. Um, notice that I click this and you know you can double click this and it is gonna preload what you're looking at. So looking at the uh, ending next week, uh, 725 call. You can also just come in here And you know, pick your date, pick which one you're looking at, and then switch, do you wanna call or do you wanna put? You can do that, or maybe if you have it set to puts and you're like, okay, maybe I wanna get puts for this time and notice everything changed based on what I clicked. So that is you know, just the real quick way to, to load up your order. The other thing you do is you click that down arrow and it's gonna give you all of the data representing it. What did it open at? What was the high, the low? Um, the multiplier, of course, is always gonna be by 100 because it is an option contract. And then this is gonna show you the level twos of the contract, and then you're gonna see the tape of that, that corresponding contract. Um, so I used to, and, and this is my infinite wisdom, I used to think this is the only way to see the, you know, the level two data from the option chain. But actually, if you click the regional quotes, that's just gonna give you the option chain right there. So I like that a lot. I like the fact that, you know, you can use this to look at the chain if you want and, you know, basically pick and choose. But once you know, okay, I want the puts for September 17th, I click that regional data and this is just flowing here. I don't have all that other fluff. If you want to look at what did it open, what did it, what's the low for the day, all of that, that's great. Uh, real easy to look at. But here you go. Now you have the chain and the tape going at you. Um, so that, it's, to me, very, very simplistic. I like it. So use the option chain. Another thing I really like is by clicking the, the, the top movers, um, you know, you can, again, you can choose. Do you want to just see what's the top movers on the calls, the puts? Um, and, uh, you know, the, the nice thing is, is when you're trading options, as you well know, when you are trading options, um, volume matters, the amount of interest, open interest and option volume, implied volatility, all of that very much so matters with options much more so than the underlying you know, derivative of that stock. So uh, the, one of the nice things is, is if you're looking to just trade the option, not necessarily invest it or use it as a hedge to your investment. Uh, for instance, um, you know, if you're shorting, buying some calls, or if you're going long, buying some puts to kind of hedge your investment. But if you are trading the option just very quickly, you can kind of just click this top mover and see which one has the high volume. Um, you know, again, puts, calls, you can choose which one you want, but basically it just inference which one has the highest volume so that you know that you have a lot of other interested parties that you can buy or sell those contracts from very, very quickly. So something I want to talk about, trade and probability calculator. This is something that just giving you the graph to kind of give you the rundown of where your break even point is, where your profit is, where your loss is, uh, ML max loss, BE break even, max gain, um, your standard deviations, what your profit and loss is going to be. I'm not a big fan of the, the little graphs. You know, I'm a visual person. I'm still not a big fan of it. But either way, 
Um, my biggest um, thing that I dislike about this, as I mentioned before, I don't like that there is not a designated level two window separate from the option or top, separate from the all-in-one order entry button. Hopefully when Charles Schwab builds their new platform that has been rumored to come out in a couple of years, we'll be, uh, you know, we'll take that into consideration. However, it's not the end of the world, but if you want to, you know, again, when you're trading, here's the option level two, but there's no way for me to simultaneously look at the level two data for the underlying stock. So what you're gonna have to do, and the reason I don't have it is because when I'm not necessarily trading options to scalp options, I use Lightspeed to trade options just for a quick in and out scalp. Uh, instead, I use options more for hedging my bet and a little more longer term. So I flip back and forth from you know these two buttons quick enough for me, so that's okay. But if you are looking to simply scalp options and you need to look at the level twos for uh, the level twos for the underlying option or the, for the option and the level two for the underlying uh, stock itself, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to actually load up two separate all-in-one trade tools. Uh, make sure this one is set to stocks and have these running side by side. Now you can kind of shrink this down. Problem is, is I don't know a single way to get rid of this. Now you can kind of um, bring some of this up like this. Let's see. So what I did was I shortened the bid and I shortened this downward arrow here. So shorten that, shorten that. You can make this a streamlined view, um, but that's the smallest you can do is to get these next to each other side by side is so you can look. And then of course, you know, depending on now, again, I have this on my limited screen here, but if, you know, if I was using on my extended uh, screen where I had a lot more real estate, I would just put it probably, you know, side by side or next to each other, so to speak. So um, either way, and then, you know, have the chart somewhere else. Um, or, you know, you can use the chart however you want. However you want to set it up, you can do that. Uh, it's kind of driving me nuts even for just this quick demo. I've also noticed when you change the font, it um, it throws that off. Just kind of scroll down and scroll back up and it'll reset. Um, you know, if it's live data, once the, you know, the numbers move enough, it'll reset itself anyway. But um, so that's, that's the downfall. You're gonna have to download or you're gonna have to upload two of those order entry windows. Um, but of course, you can minimize the real estate involved with that order entry window on that second one if you just, um, if you just shorten everything. So here, streamline view is what that's called, that downward arrow. Um, this is gonna be the standard where it's got everything open um, and you just kind of take a look at that. But either way, I don't need this for me, but uh, if you need that, you're gonna have to upload two or you know open two of those all-in-one trade tools. So hope this was helpful to some of you. Hope this helped. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please drop me a question down below in the comment section. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of it. If you've hung out with me this long, I really do appreciate it. I'd love to have you as part of the channel. Subscribe, smash that like button for those algorithms, and I will catch you all next time.